Hello there, my friends. Today we are talking about heat. Thank you so much for sending in all your questions. I feel like this video has been on my bucket list for at least a year and I finally got around to making it. If you want to jump to any specific question, look at the description below the video. I list all the questions and you can just click on them. When you're roasting two sheet pans of veggies, should you put them both on the same rack or on two different racks? Will either method affect browning at all? I would definitely put them on the same rack side by like right next to each other, not one on top of the other. And the reason for that is that uh, most ovens have a heating element on the bottom, right? So that's where your heat is coming from. It's rising from the bottom. If you have one cookie sheet on the bottom rack, that cookie sheet will absorb all that heat and the top cookie sheet, not much is going to happen. So yes, definitely put them side by side, even if you have a convection fan. By the way, let's talk about convection fans briefly. So convection fans blow air and by blowing air, they get things to brown faster. I usually people say, oh, with convection, you just cook faster. I don't think you just cook faster. You cook differently. You get the outside of your food much more blistered and browned. So sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not good. It depends on your dish. Lots of people feel that, oh, if I have convection fan, I can just like load my oven with all this cookie sheets and everything will be fantastic. Mm, I found I have convection fan, but that doesn't normally happen. So if I absolutely have to put one cookie sheet on top and one on the bottom, I would try to rotate them and uh, not just leave them in the same place so that both of them get a chance to be towards the bottom of the oven. But if possible, put them side by side. The next two questions are related. One is from Sizable Ben and one is from Rafi Art. When I sear steaks in my frying pan, I always create a ton of smoke in my apartment. Usually happens during the second steak. The steaks aren't burnt and turn out wonderfully, but my girlfriend has to fan the fire alarm and open all the windows. What am I doing wrong? And a similar question from Rafi Art, I have the same problem. Once I even had firefighters in my apartment since our alarm is centralized and neighbors thought there was a fire. Since then I add a lot of oil, but I don't like that. I think the only solution is to deactivate the smoke detectors, which is risky. All right, so here's the thing, my friends. There are a couple of tips I have for you. The first is make sure you're preheating your pans, not overheating them. I find very often people preheat their pans too much or sometimes not enough. And so the way you know that your pan is not insanely hot is that I prefer to preheat mine with oil. There's actually going to be a question about that later on that I'll answer. When the oil starts to be wavy and ripply and just the very, very first hint of smoke starts to come off from it. Not tons of smoke, just a hint. That's when your food goes in. I find very often when people preheat the pan without oil, by the time they add the food, this pan is so hot that things are just crazy. Another thing to realize is that what sets off your fire alarms is not your steak, but the empty spots in your skillet. In those empty spots, nothing is absorbing the heat. Like the steak is absorbing the heat, but where there is no steak or chicken or anything, the oil keeps getting hotter and hotter and smokier and smokier. And so what you can do is cut up some carrots, for example. I keep some usually in my fridge in a little Ziploc bag, cut them into big slices, like big planks, and fill in those empty spots. You don't want a ton of empty spots. I don't mean pile in the carrots in a single layer, just basically get the carrots to be the stand-in for extra steak. Um, and the reason I like carrots is because unlike potatoes, they don't stick, they don't discolor, they're cheap, you can keep them on hand all the time, and they're fairly low moisture, so they don't produce a ton of steam in the pan, so your steak's still browning great. You'll see me doing that in some of my videos. I discovered this trick because in my previous uh, house. It was an apartment um, and we had our first kid there 
and I was teaching cooking classes at night very often and it really sucked if we put the kid to sleep and the kid finally fell asleep and then I'm teaching a class and the fire alarm goes off that was terrible. So I, and my hood was awful. Like right now I have a great hood. My fire alarms don't go off anymore because of the good hood that went outside. But in that condo, we didn't have that. We did not have a hood that went outside. And so I had to come up with some system to never ever set off fire alarms while still browning all my steaks and pork chops and fish beautifully. And so I discovered that if I try to avoid empty spots in the pan, that really helps. Uh, as far as adding more oil, no, that does not help. Um, I would not add more oil. I mean, you need to add the right amount of oil for your food, but don't try to add even more oil than necessary. That won't really solve the problem. When should you heat pans with oil? or without oil. So that's the question that I told you we'll get to. And Michael has a really good story to tell us about that. Last week, I was searing steaks in the stainless steel skillet. I wanted to get the skillet ripping hot, so I let it heat up and kept checking with an infrared thermometer to see if it was up to about 400. The thermometer kept showing weirdly low temperatures, so I kept waiting. After a few minutes, I decided to screw the infrared thermometer and I added my oil to the pan. The oil immediately ignited, so I covered the pan with the lid and took it outside to cool off. I googled and realized that infrared thermometers are not accurate with reflective surfaces like stainless steel. So my next question. What are reliable techniques to see if your pan and also the grill are preheated? So, um, yeah, the unfortunate thing about infrared thermometers is that um, they don't always work. It really depends on the surface. So I have one, but I basically never use it because it's so, so unreliable, um, at least for me. <laughs> so the way I know when my pan is hot, if it is a stainless steel pan or a non-stick pan, is that I preheat my those two types of pans with oil. Um, there is a lot of controversy over should you preheat the pan with oil, should you not preheat the pan with oil. The thing is, both work. It's not like, you know me, I don't like rules when it comes to cooking. I don't like this prescriptive stuff that thou shall do this all the time. I'm mostly curious as to why. And so if I'm preheating the pan, without oil, there are no signs that the pan is ready. And I feel that very often people try really hard to preheat it really well and then the pan ends up overheating and that's actually quite dangerous with non-stick pans. It's not dangerous with stainless steel pans unless you set the oil on fire, but with non-stick pans it is dangerous. So if I put the oil in, I know the stages the oil will go through. First, it'll get a little shaky, a little ripply, and then it will start to kind of separate and pool in places where I have some places with very low oil and some places with more oil. Um, and eventually, I, I will see not quite smoke because it doesn't go from nothing to smoke, but like the first, first hint. And that's when I would add something that needs a very quick sear, like a steak. Um, there's of course foods that don't need quite as high of a temperature, but if I want that blast of heat, that's when the food goes in. So I really like adding oil to my pans as they're heating up. The exception to that is cast iron pans. The problem with cast iron pans is that they preheat for a very long time and very unevenly. So uh, I timed it once and my stainless steel pan preheats in about two minutes. That, by the way, that will not necessarily be the case on your stove because we all have different stoves, right? So, and my cast iron pan preheats in about five to six minutes at least. Um, and what happens with cast iron is that you'll have hot spots and then cold spots. And if you put the oil in as it's preheating, the oil that touches the hot spots will start to smoke. So you're thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to put my food in, but the other parts of the pan might still be cooler. And so what I like to do with cast iron is give it good about five minutes or so on moderate heat. I don't set it to the highest possible setting uh, so that it preheats 
relatively gently and thoroughly. And then I add the oil and set it to what I want. If I want a little bit higher, a little bit lower. But a lot of it is gut feel because um, most other things are not very reliable. You know, even that whole sprinkling of water into the pan, I don't completely get that. I mean, one day you might sprinkle a little more water and a little less water. So it's really hard to tell reliably, is this good or not? So, um, and yeah, that's one of the reasons that I love stainless steel pans versus cast iron, is because you put oil in and they're preheated, preheated quickly and evenly. All right, now the, as far as grills go, um, for grills, there's no such thing if you on a gas grill. And since I only grill on gas, that's what I'll talk about. On a gas grill, there's no such thing as I overheated the grill. So I usually err on the side of more rather than less. I turn all the burners on high and I give it 15 minutes. If I'm not ready to grill in 15 minutes, it's not a biggie. You see, with skillets, um, you have that piece of metal that's sitting right over the flame and that piece of metal keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter. With the grill, you know, um, you just have the grill grates. So once you open that grill, the grill grates will cool off a little bit. So there's no worry for most things about getting a gas grill too hot. So just err on the side of more rather than less. How hot does a pan need to get? I know different tasks require different temperatures. What tasks requir require very hot preheats and what tasks require more moderate preheats? Um, so it just depends on how much browning you want, right? So if I'm cooking any sort of meat, fish, I want brown crispy, right? So there I want fairly high heat, um, especially if my protein is thin, because then I don't have that much time. I've got to brown it fast, like a skirt steak, right? If I'm browning something that's relatively thick and I have more time, I might need it a little bit less, still very sizzly, but not ripping hot. And if I am, and on the other side of this whole equation, are things like sweating out vegetables for a soup, like mirepoix, the carrot, celery, onion thing. So that, I don't want brown and crispy. I want that translucent and tender and golden brown. And so in those cases, you could even put it all into a cold pan with some fat, oil or butter, and then put it on the heat. So there is no need to preheat the pan at all because you want it nice and gently and slowly. It's rare that I'm preheating to about medium because if I want browning, I will always preheat to very high. And once the food goes in, I will then adjust it lower. It's pretty easy to drop it it's very hard to raise it. Because if you start it too high and you're like, oh, this is a little too high, just on a gas stove, lower the heat on electric, move off the burner. But if you start it too low, the food might start to sweat and then it's gonna be very, very hard to brown it. I find that I'm almost never using a heat above five out of 10 on my stove, unless I'm boiling water. Olive oil smokes at about three for me and canola oil at around a four, assuming a preheated, otherwise empty pan. Am I missing out on the upper ranges of my stove when I see medium high in a recipe, for example, what does that mean for me? For reference, I have an electric stove, but I was in a similar position on my old gas stove. First of all, you might not be doing anything wrong. All stoves and all pans are different. For example, I have this one pan called the green pan. It's like this new alternative to Teflon. And that pan is so racy. It like burns everything. Like there's no way I can use more than medium heat in that pan. Uh, so quite possibly there is no problem at all. But I've noticed that you said that you preheat an empty pan. And what might be happening is that your pans are just overheating a little. See, if you set a pan on the stove and don't add anything to it, the pan, even on medium heat, will absorb more and more and more heat. Surely it's losing some heat, 
to the ambient temperature, but it's also gaining heat from your burner. So if you preheat twice as long as you actually need it to on medium heat, you might have a very hot pan. So it might be worth putting the oil in and preheating the pan with the oil. Um, the only uh, word of warning about putting fats into your pan and preheating them with the pan is that it works great for oil. It does not work for butter. Somehow butter, if you put to a pan and then start gradually heating it up, butter gets kind of very explosive. <laughs> so I, if I'm using butter, I prefer to preheat my pan with a tiny bit of oil. The tiny bit of oil will tell me when the pan is ready and then throw in butter and have it melt very quickly and then put the food in right away. So, but yeah, there is absolutely no need to try to be cranking up that heat. If you're browning things and they work and they taste good, then there's no problem. I have a hot stove at home and when I simmer something, it will boil in the matter of minutes when it's at the lowest heat. Any advice? So first things first, make sure that if you want really low heat and you want a gentle simmer that you do not cover the pot because once the pot is covered, uh, the steam starts to build up, the pressure starts to build up and things will boil. But I'm guessing that's not what you're doing, right? So um, you're probably keeping it uncovered and it's still boiling. So if this is electric stove, that's kind of unlikely to happen. But if it's a gas stove, yes, that often happens. And on many gas stoves, the knobs are adjustable. If you can find the manual for your stove, if you don't have it, Google for it. Most manuals are online. Uh, or you can ask a um, service guy to come and take a look. They often can remove your knobs and twist a little thing inside there to adjust your flame so that your flame is much lower on the low setting. So that's the next thing I would try. And if that doesn't work, or maybe that's just impossible on your stove, then I would Google Take a look on Amazon for a heat diffuser. Heat diffusers, they come in many shapes and sizes. Some are like discs that are solid, some are metal discs with holes, but it's basically something you put on top of your burner and then you put your pot on top of that heat diffuser and that will really help you tame that flame. How does heat work in the oven? In other words, how do I know which oven rack to use? Also, how should I control the heat of the oven when the top of some baked goods is getting brown too quickly? All right, so the general rule of thumb in the ovens, although all of them are different, is that if you want the bottom to brown, place it as close as possible to the bottom of the oven because oven walls radiate heat. So the closer you are to a particular wall, that's the part that'll brown. Bottom for bottom of the oven. And if you want the top of your baked good to brown, put it closer to the top wall. I have a question about oven temperatures. I am pretty sure mine runs low because everything takes way longer than the recommended time. I bought an analog thermometer to test and it is indeed 25 plus lower than the dial. Or is the analog temp wrong? How do you ensure your oven is accurate? So um, one thing to realize about ovens is that there is no such thing as just accurate or inaccurate. Um, First of all, some ovens run extra hot on the bottom, but just fine high up. Uh, so you have all sorts of temperatures in your oven. There is no one temperature. Uh, second problem is that some ovens tend to drift. In other words, if you preheated it for say 30 minutes, in the beginning it might run low, but if you're baking something for a long time, after about an hour it might run high, solvents are all over the place. That being said, if you've noticed that everything takes extra long and yes, your analog thermometer says it's 25 degrees lower, just keep setting your temperature 25 degrees higher for everything and see if that helps. Um, you could have somebody to come and service your oven and see if they can adjust the thermostat. 
and get it to be a bit more precise but 25 degrees off is kind of par for the course for ovens ovens are extremely imprecise so i would just keep notes on all the recipes and see which temperature and timing actually worked for you versus what the recipe says you know the recipes are just suggestions of what to try the first time and another idea if you're having a hard time browning things is to get darker baking sheets um, you can season baking sheets um, I have a video on that I'll try to link to it below this one um, where basically you try to artificially age your baking sheets to get them to go from shiny to kind of really splotchy and the darker color of the baking sheets will make your things brown faster and raising the temperature wouldn't hurt either all right my friends that's all the heat related questions so stay curious keep on cooking and i'll see you next time